everybody is this perch. And, uh, you know, there was a question uh, a little bit ago about why DC is doing all these six issue series and, you know, Marvel's doing a lot of five issue series. And basically we've got a bunch of limited series comics that are going on right now. And there's, you know, with those comics cause comes an increasing line that I'm seeing a lot of, uh, creators say, but it's really not coming from creators. It's coming from the publisher. And then the creator is kind of echoing it, you know, slightly, hopefully. And, uh, it's, it, I, whenever I see it, it, it's a little sad. And the message is, uh, yeah, this is just a six issue series, but if it's popular, we'll do more. And I look, I, this isn't a knock against the creators. I think the creators are, um, you know, like they're, they're trying to get the message out, which is basically a, a pretty obvious one. If you buy it, there will be more. So please buy it, buy it. So, you know, we can keep this story rolling, but, um, it, you know, if <laughs> unfortunately the dark side to that comment is that the publishers have, have basically got everyone working on such a tiny leash. There's, you know, very little room to actually grow the product in a meaningful way. And at this point, I don't know, it, it, it feels like a psyop, you know, they've got the creators basically, uh, and not a war with the fans, it's, it's way too strong a term, but, but basically they've got the creators out there going, you know, damn it, these fans need to, you know, don't pirate, and you shouldn't, pirate is, pirating is, it's not legal, but regardless, don't pirate, buy, buy the book, get out there and buy the book. And I, I, you know, I hear that, particularly when you're on social media and a lot of people will express, you know, you, you will get 500 likes for a post. There was, um, <laughs> early on in the X run, uh, Teeny Howard had posted something and, and Teeny Howard doesn't do much on social media. It's generally pretty quiet. Uh, but it posted something and it got like 12,000 likes. And, you know, if, if half of those people had actually shown up to buy the book, we wouldn't be seeing a, you know, Captain Britain, Betsy Braddock, you know, limited series. But the main reason that the whole thing irritates me is, is that it, it is a scam from the publishers to basically put as little commitment on the table as possible. Now they have the money and funding to do at least the big two do, you know, if you know, many of you have, have wrote in going, well, they're, they're losing money. They're going to get shut down, but, but probably they won't, you know, certainly not Marvel and, and DC may be passed around to a point where it changes its status, but, both these companies are IP farms for very, very successful movies. Uh, the comics are considered licensing and marketing, and in their, and that purpose, they're they're doing their job. They're 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 doing enough to make the parent company happy. So they're they're going. So now I, I'm just going to ask you this question. Think about it for a minute. Both publishers putting out seventy to eighty comics, less than uh, less than April for DC, but. But anyway, more than 50 comics, keep it simple. Both of them. Every month, like clockwork, there isn't a month where it's like, ooh, our sales are down, we're going to have to go down to 30 comics. No, they keep clocking out 50 plus comics a month. What would be the harm in, uh, you know, taking 10 of those comics, 20 of those comics, and just, just having them be regular old ongoings? What would be the harm in a publishing strategy of having, say, 10 of those comics, uh, you know, our brand new characters, new ideas that they just make an ongoing, commit to an ongoing, go and sign that creator for two years. What would be the harm? They've been putting out that volume of comics for, you know, <laughs> well more than a decade. Not stopping. You're telling me you couldn't put a uh, contract with a kill fee in for three years to a creator? Why, why, why couldn't you do that? The, the publishers, or rather the creators will tell you, well, you know, the publishers have to, you know, manage their money. They have to, I mean, I heard this from a creator. I felt like, man, you've been brainwashed. The publishers have to manage their money. That's why, you know, they're, they're going to do six issues. And if it works out, then they'll do another six issues. Except here's the thing. They're going to be printing those comics anyway. If it's not the six issue co you know, contract that you've got, it's going to be a six issue contract with somebody else. They're going to do it no matter what. So as a creator... Don't accept a six-issue contract. I know it's easy to say right now. You know, it's a uh, it's a seller's market, so to speak. So uh, you know, the the publisher can basically do whatever they want. If you walk in there and go, uh, "Yeah, I'm 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 here for a one-year contract and a commitment on a book," and uh, I'm not I'm not going to take a six you know six-issue series. 
then the publisher basically goes, uh, all right, that's cool. Fine. Um, you know, get uh, call up, you know, call up Danny Lord. Does, uh, does Danny know anybody, you know, on Instagram that would like to come in here? It, it, they don't care, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's, it's, it's that combined with another really toxic thing, um, are, is, is basically, I think, wrecking comics. So the other thing that goes on is because the creator only has six issues to make a shot to, to you know, get their name out there, to get some attention, the creator, meaning the writer, um, is encouraged to write some kind of bonkers, crazy shit that is going to retcon the character or change things in a major way in order to spike sales. Hey, you're never going to believe what we're doing with, with Storm. We're doing something uh, really amazing, and it's it's we're going to create some buzz around it. We're going to get out there on on Twitter and get them excited about it. That's what's going to happen. Something, something amazing. And that's what pushes them down the track to uh, massively change parts of the character's origin. It, it causes them to, uh, you know, it's like, Hey, let, let's, let's, this character is now a man, what, whatever it happens to be. This is where a lot of this stems from. People are going, I, I see people making these comments like, why are, why are these comics, uh, you know, catering to 1% of a, an audience? Why are, why are we, why are we doing non-binary gender fluid characters when it's uh, such a tiny percentage of the population? Well, easy because it gets attention. It may be 1% of the population, but it's like 20% of the conversation on Twitter. And so if you want a cheap pop, a cheap buzz, these wrestling term there, cheap pop, if you want cheap pop, Hey, throw one of those things in there. Does it appeal to only uh, 1% of uh, people who actually want to read it? That who cares? It doesn't matter. Its goal is to get attention on Twitter because if it gets attention on Twitter, it gets a little bit more buzz. If it gets a little bit more buzz, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny chance that people may buy it out of, you know, somewhat controversy sales, which gives you a tiny, tiny chance of having your six issue run go to 12. And to the writer, that's the game. That's what they're after. I mean, and, and by the way, anyone going, well, that's horrible. Yeah, fuck off. That's that's money. That's a paycheck. People are, are working to get paid. This is a entirely screwed up system. You've got a world where the publisher encourages the writer to go for, God, who cares about continuity? Continuity is long, drawn out, and boring. Sure, we've been publishing these comics for decades and decades and decades, and sure, the entire crux of the audience and everything we've done with comics is long form storytelling that's meant to play out over years, but screw all that because we're going to give this person a six month contract and we're going to dangle that over their heads. And if they don't get enough attention and they don't get enough sales, well then, uh, you know, they, they won't renew the title and, you know, maybe we'll find something else for you. But for a lot of these writers who spent five, six years begging and clawing and, you know, basically warping themselves on social media in order to get there, you know, they're, they, they'll hold on to that as, as much as they can because that's the best paycheck in town unless you go into business for yourself. And if you go into business for yourself, you're going to probably need some capital to get going. And if you need capital to get going, then you're going to need a job. And if you're going to need a job, then you're back at Marvel doing a six-issue series. And so you're encouraged to do the craziest, most continuity-breaking shit possible in order to get attention in the hopes that you get your comics up. But Years and years of this practice now have resulted in the audience basically being in on the con that none of this stuff terribly matters and the things will never be the same again bullshit doesn't go anywhere. That's where we're at. And it's a screwed up system. It's a very cyclical system. It's a very cynical system. The problem is, is none of this is sustainable. No matter what, you know, anyone says, comics was not meant to be a six issue and out system. It was meant to be a multi-year sprawling storytelling system. That's what it is. That's really the only promise it can advertise that, you know, makes up for having a three ninety five dollars cover price. Nobody wants to pay that much for something that is, you know, fairly disposable. You have plenty of that on the internet. You you can get web comics that are entirely disposable for free. Long form storytelling requires a promise. The promise that if you keep reading, it will get better. It will it will build on itself. The lore, 
you know, investing your time into this leads to a richer, deeper experience. That's what comic storytelling promises. And, you know, the, the, uh, the idea of having kind of longer term, term storytelling with characters known around the world is maybe worth a higher cover price. That's why it attracts collectors. But if you go down an entire system that says, hey, you know, I uh, hope you, you know, if you buy it and, and talk about it, then maybe they'll give us more. I mean, the, the weird side effect of all this is, and I, when, you talk, when I talk to writers, they often blame the fans. The fans are to blame for not showing up to buy this comic. The fans are to blame when they, uh, you know, get angry on social media. Matt Rosenberg has uh, kind of talked about some of this in his blog of just, you know, being like, man, people don't show up to buy the books that we make for them. It's like, bro, um, <laughs> come on, Matty. <laughs> um, and and no, no offense, but, and, and there's nothing you could do to change it. So I'm sympathetic here. I'm sympathetic. There's one thing you could do to change it. But by and large, it's the publisher's game. I agree it would be wonderful if the fans, the customers, showed up to buy these comics and gave some stability, and then people got those longer contracts, and we can helpfully rebuild the system. But look, everything, everything involved in this entire business has been built to be short-term. And while that's super annoying for the fans and the customers, they have an option. They can just stop buying. The creators, the message to them is, uh, you're screwed. You know, keep keep playing. Pray that one day you'll you know you'll be lucky enough to get on a book with some longevity, and then uh, you know take it from there. But how many books have longevity now? Very very few. And even the ones that you know are big names are increasingly still signing creators to short term arcs. By the way, this isn't a 2023 thing. Like ah, oh, Birch just figured this out. This has been going on for a while. It's how the business has evolved. And it's a bad thing. What's the one solution? Get out. <laughs> Sorry. The solution is figure out ways, honestly, to go into business for yourself. At, at the very least, if you're a writer, if you're an artist, I mean, easier for a writer. Um, you've got to have a play outside of the big two and this scam. You have to. If you don't, you, you're you just you're basically you're you're trapping yourself. No, that doesn't just mean crowdfunding. There are other options, and and there are other options outside of comics. You can certainly build up a bit of name in games, or some of the other things. There's other there's different routes for you, but I'll tell you the two sickest ones at the moment are comics for all the reasons I just described, and the one that uh, a lot of people in comics want to jump to, writing for TV, which is in many ways. As, as dodgy and as at risk as comics, only at sometimes a bigger and longer scale. Anyway, what do you think? <laughs> There's your cheerful, sunny video for today. Thanks for listening.